see the parade, who were there to, or, or just there in the corner, were incredibly receptive to our messages. They were incredibly receptive to the political statements we were making and to uh, just just our presence there, our, our, our bringing our voices out there, uh, including and especially really by the end, toward the end of the parade route where we were going down St. Anne past all of the gay bars in the quarter where the crowds were the heaviest. Um, it was also the loudest and people really responded to it. It was not just, I don't know, a lot of people who hear about this, they think, oh, why would you spoil their party? Why would you alienate these people? But it's not. People want this. People want to speak out right now. As as I pointed out, as you all surely know, these these attacks on us uh, have escalated just in the last week, but they are they're pretty much relentless at this point. So uh, people are outraged and afraid and and exhausted, and this is your time to get out there and fight back and be part of this. And I personally. Uh, I mean, this is what gives me hope, it is us coming together and standing up against this. So, uh, in the face of this disheartening, this constant parade of disheartening news, um, th this is where uh, our power comes from. And so, are there other questions or comments? I have a, an event to promote when, after people are done discussing. Or unless I should just stop anything. <laughs> Go for it. Okay, cool. Good evening, everyone. My name is Geets, and I'm the co-chair of the Transgender Advisory Committee at Crescent Care Health. And I'm here to promote, um, we're having our third um, Transgender and Gender Not Conforming Feedback Forum. So just to give you an idea about what this is, this is um, a group of, we now have, I think, 15 people of trans and gender non-conforming experience working at Crescent Care. And so, like, you know, we got a lot of room to like grow within our own agency, but the rest of the city has a lot more growing to do. So what we're trying to do is pull community leaders in from other major healthcare organizations to come to consensus about how they can better serve the community. So our first forum brought everyone together to talk about all of the issues, all of the challenges, all of the struggles. Our second forum was to talk about how we could actually maybe start working on some of those issues. And now we've pulled together a three point, or a, oh, sorry, a five point plan that we want to bring to all of the major healthcare organizations within City to say this is what we're demanding in terms of accessing better care. So what we want to do is we want to bring this to community, have everyone go over it, see where we need to tweak it, see where how we can like maybe like think about some like anticipated issues, some anticipated successes. Um, but that's some heavy shit to talk about, y'all. So we had some feedback that it's a little heavy to talk about like just like health trauma in general. So we're opening it up with kind of a um, community talent showcase and about capitalism, but we're paying people for their time. Um, so if you know anybody who's a trans or gender non-conforming experience who has like either a spoken word, a performance piece, dance, music, a projection, whatever they want, uh, if it's five minutes or less, we can pay people, so we're still accepting submissions for that. I also have a flyer for the forum itself. It's gonna be on June 23rd at the Public Library. There is transportation provided for people through NOLA um, Rideshare and um, also food, and we're also having Spanish translation. And if anyone wants to take a sneak peek at the five point plan, I have that here as well. So if anyone has any questions um, or feedback, we are trying to hold this space to be for people of trans experience and who are gender non-conforming. So, because in the past we've had issues with like a ton of allies in the room and not a lot of community. So please be mindful of your own identity. Um, but there are other ways to help or promote and support if you're interested. So feel free to come talk to me afterwards. Oh, absolutely. So there are a lot of sponsors of this year's Pride. Many of them are just local organizations, and you know, I'm, that there's an issue with all businesses under capitalism. It's always exploitative. But what really stood out to us were four particular major corporations that are just it, it's it's deeply offensive that they would agree to, to the, the New Orleans Pride would agree to take their money to be a, to shake hands with these devils. Uh, the first of which is Walgreens, which is sponsoring the parade. Walgreens has a policy, a religious freedom policy in their pharmacies, which allows a pharmacist to refuse to serve LGBTQ people. Uh, and the caveat is they have to refer them to another pharmacist, but in small towns, 
that's that's pointless. You know, LGBTQ people in, in where I grew up in Coleman, Alabama, would probably have to find a way to Huntsville or Birmingham, which are an hour away. Uh, and if you're if you're a working class, if you're poor, if you're in the closet from your family, which everybody in Coleman, Alabama is probably in the closet. Uh, then that's not something, you know, you don't necessarily have those resources. So it's really not, uh, it, it, it is a destructive policy. Furthermore, just as of last year, there was a class action suit against Walgreens for uh, overcharging people uh, for generic medications, especially people on Medicaid and Medicare. They literally, as of last year, were ripping off poor people uh, and overcharging them for medication, which Many of them needed to live. So uh, this is not, I mean, that obviously is going to affect the LGBTQ people and people of color more significantly, more, more proportionately than, than others. But regardless, it is not something that some, an organization or a corporation, uh, or, or excuse me, an organization like Pride should be uh, in bed with. And there's Walmart notoriously uh, anti-worker in every way possible. Uh, their entire history is about busting unions. They destroy small communities. They are a major polluter. And though in the recent past their policies toward LGBTQ employees have shifted somewhat, they certainly have a homophobic history and a transphobic history. And they have been exposed recently as funding the, uh, the politicians behind all of these anti-abortion laws. Uh, these same politicians are obviously also anti-LGBTQ, like they, you don't find one without the other. Uh, and regardless though, these abortion bans are deeply affecting trans people uh, all around the country, deeply affecting queer people all around the country, even, uh, even as we speak, the, many of these laws have already been passed. And so that, the hypocrisy of <laughs> taking Walmart's money to, to, to celebrate this is um, one of the most egregious uh, ones on the list. Another is Shell, the ninth largest polluter in the entire world, tenth if you include the US military in that list, which is the largest polluter in the world. Um, Shell has ties to the ruling class of Brunei, which is just passed a law that would uh, basically gay people can be executed for being gay. Uh, they have promised not to enforce it. So what you mean? Uh, <laughs> which, uh, is completely meaningless. And uh, that's just one of the many things. Shell has a long history of having activists murdered, uh, destroying uh, the environment everywhere, uh, especially in Africa. Uh, and um, also, of course, as a one of the biggest corporations in the world, uh, very much anti-working class and anti-union. And the other one that stood out was GE, uh, which is, if I'm not mistaken, the 26th largest arms dealer in the world, uh, major supporter of the US military and the Israeli military, both of whom uh, actively engage in genocide. Uh, it's also, uh, they are responsible for 78 Superfund sites, and for those who aren't familiar, these are sites built on toxic soil, just like Gordon Plaza here in New Orleans. Uh, they are a major polluter, obviously, if they're building these sites. They are, of course, also anti-union, and uh, in general, um, one of the largest imperialist companies uh, with interest, interests uh, around the world. So the, these four corporations stood out to us specifically as um, just especially insulting, and that will be definitely a big part of our protest. Um, the other parts that we are objecting to is the presence of the military and police in this. Obviously, we talked about Stonewall. Stonewall was a, a police raid. Literally, the origins of Pride are us standing against the police violence. Um, police violence is currently escalating once again here in New Orleans. Um, there are still trans people being placed into the wrong parts of OPP. Um, as of a few weeks ago, 
a trans man narrowly avoided being put into a uh, general population with uh, women. Um, and uh, there is, a, I'm not mistaken, still at least one trans woman in OPP in the men's cells. Um, there, you know, you know, PD has a history of harassing black and brown trans women in the city, uh, sexually assaulting them as well. Uh, NOPD has a history of profiling them and accusing them of being sex workers if they happen to be carrying condoms, or probably just period, but they use that as their evidence. Uh, and uh, in general, um, are explicitly uh, anti-LGBTQ despite the, dissent, the, dissent, the consent decree. And uh, even if they weren't, even if they had a clean track record with this, the way the laws work in this country, the laws that they are enforcing and upholding are still deeply homophobic. They are automatically our enemies. So uh, their presence and pride is unwelcome and makes, makes me feel unsafe, but I'm sure it makes others as well. Um, and then the US military, obviously a uh, long history of uh, homophobia and transphobia, but besides that, they are the armed wing of U.S. imperialism. They're the ones who go to these other countries and um, enforce the corporate interests in these countries. They're the ones who, you know, we have 6,000 troops in Africa right now uh, protecting U.S. property there. They have uh, destroyed many, many countries whose LGBTQ laws were probably more progressive in many, in many ways than those of the U.S. They have installed right-wing dictatorships in many different countries, uh, and those dictatorships have had support from the U.S. military or training from the U.S. military. So uh, they are heavily, heavily involved in LGBTQ oppression all around the world. And even, again, if they weren't, their support of the capitalist system by being the protectors of imperialism, by being the forces of imperialism, is what uh, maintains our oppression. So we object to their presence in any sort of uh, anything that so pretends to be about our liberation, hmm. because it clearly isn't. Mm -hmm. Comments, questions? information about many, many, many war crimes and other uh, activities of the U.S. military, especially in Iraq. I believe that there was video of journalists being murdered. Um, and, and the list is, uh, I mean, there was quite a bit of intelligence released because of her. Uh, and um, the U.S. military obviously arrested her, and before her trial, she was not out. She was not out as a trans woman. So before her trial, they outed her. They publicly released the information that she was a trans woman uh, in an attempt to humiliate her and sway people against her. Uh, and I believe that was <laughs> that was a failed strategy because what followed was uh, quite a bit of support for her, especially from LGBTQ <coughs> organizations. Um, and from anti-war organizations and from anybody who is anti-imperialism uh, or against just the U.S.'s um, attempt to conquer the world. Um, and she spent seven years in prison, the longest of anyone, any whistleblower uh, in history. Uh, much of that was spent in solitary confinement. She attempted to kill herself at least three times. 
she struggled to get uh, the health care that she needed in there, not just the mental health, but also all the, the transgender health care. She was in a men's prison that first time. Uh, and eventually, after years of struggle of people supporting her, of people, uh, you know, pressuring for it, on, I believe his last day in office, his last week in office, Obama commuted her sentence. He didn't, you know, she wasn't declared innocent, there was no amnesty, it was just a commutation. Um, and now they're coming back after her again. They arrested Assange, and now they're coming after her again to get her to testify. She was in prison and then released and then brought back to prison. And in the slideshow that Vanna put together, which was so fantastic, she, um, there's the quote say, of her saying she'd rather starve than reveal who, uh, or reveal to testify against WikiLeaks. Uh, and the, <laughs> I mean, as Gus says, I, I too am in all of the courage that it takes to do that, uh, especially as a trans woman being sent to prison, especially as somebody who has been so publicly against the U.S. military the, and the U.S. establishment that is not, uh, and she's been put back into solitary at least one of those times that she was brought back. So she is facing uh, torture, essentially. Stormy DeLarvery. She um, was known as the Lady of the Jewel Box because she was uh, part of the, the drag scene at this club called the Jewel Box. And she was also, she took it upon herself to be security for uh, queer spaces there. She would openly carry her gun and uh, just sort of patrol. Uh, she was very. Um, she was a badass. <laughs> <laughs> you said Blair was the jewel box? I don't remember. I think it was in New York. New York? Mm -hmm. And hearing what you're saying, it just makes me wonder about. Like when I hear about queer stuff now, I don't know where the words are exactly. It just generally not very inspiring, you know? It doesn't really make me, you know, like pride, for example. It doesn't really sound interesting. Um, but, and so hearing what you're saying, and the connection with that, like I appreciated hearing what you said about uh, ACT UP. think about that in relationship to, like, I don't, like how, and I appreciate also how you said um, uh, that, uh, I don't mean to speak for you, but what I understood is that the, like, pride, they really become the enemy, and that, and how you made when you were marching, behind the parade, how the people really receive the messages about the radical um, movement, the existence of radical queer movement, that that was well received and well responded to. Like I'm, I'm thinking about these things in connection to their, most of the organizations that I know of that do queer work have similar struggles. Just like most organizations that are existing in the same economy, mm -hmm. you know, with people who have the same information, you know, and, and choices that are difficult choices, you know what I'm saying, are you know, dealing in the same struggle. So, I'm curious about, like, I don't think that like, present care is, a, is an enemy. Right. Like, when I hear about the things that are going on, or breakout, or 
correct any of the organizations. But I know uh, what 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 we have. <laughs> and so I'm curious about how you name the pride has become the enemy and your strategy for kind of the jujitsu. You know? Well, I. I don't know. I'm just. That's what yeah. I'm well, let me start here. Uh, organizations like Breakout and Crescent Care, they're they're providing support for the community. They're they're providing a service, and uh, obviously, money we, in my house has come from those places. So yeah, I'm not, I want to put that out there. <laughs> uh, LGBTQ people are under capitalism have been forced to be inherently political. So obviously, there's political aspects to those organizations and uh, you know breakout did have that uh, moment historically uh, in 2016 in the wake of the pulse shooting they pulled out of pride because of the police presence so you know they, they, they've been part of the struggle um, I, right now I understand they're going through changes internally and uh, are currently not doing a lot of organizing work um, but our, my objection, and I think our objection to pride specifically, is pride historically was a political fight back. It was a political statement. It was a deeply, deeply radical movement that began at Stonewall and was a celebration and of Stonewall that honored that spirit originally. And it became a focal point for the LGBTQ struggle uh, throughout its history, and so the the watering down of it, the the assimilation of pride into the New Orleans tourism corporate structure, uh, that has shifted the political focus and the movement uh, away from our radical roots and away from our struggle for liberation, um, and that's why that's our our focus. And that's why it's our attention is because it is. Um, it's taking up the space. It's taking away. Uh, it, it, it's it's it, it. It reminds me, and I apologize if this is not an appropriate comparison, but it reminds me of the white supremacist monuments, and that it is there to obscure the actual history. Yes. It distracts people from what the real history of LGBTQ struggle is in the city, just like those monuments distract people from what the actual history of the people they represent are. Um, and so that's, that, that's why it pulls our attention. That's why, that's why it offends me personally. That's why uh, we want to direct our attention there because if we can take back pride, as the flyer says, then we take back our movement. Hmm. And I just want to say that um, this Pride parade in particular promotes consumerism and assimilation. Mm -hmm. um, consumerism and assimilation is not going to free us as uh, LGBTQ people. Um, our, uh, our, um, these corporations that sponsor, as they commit atrocities against our community, uh, get their uh, rainbow stamp when they per dole out funds here. So when we are talking about uh, true queer gay liberation it does not look like that Ooh. it does not look like that these corporations have so many lobbyists mm. up in washington dc that steadily fight for their interests as they commit atrocities to uh against our community but also where if you are so invested in us why aren't you shifting those dollars against these horrendous laws that's and our rights that's being taken away i'm sorry i'm getting like no go for it uh, <laughs> But like when when we when we are passive when these so called celebration of uh, our liberation pass by, we participate in that revision and we participate in our own erasure and that cannot stand. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, there won't be anything. I like to say it might surprise people, but LGBTQ people need air to breathe too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'll, 
important to mention about the last year talking about uh, people being as receptive as they were. There was uh, it was almost like duping them. Almost like what? It was almost like duping them because they a lot of people thought we were the gay <laughs> so they were really receptive to the signs that we had and, and and what we were saying because they thought oh this is the pride parade look at what they're saying you know um so i mean that's just a part of it so i'm i'm not so i think there was certainly support but i think there was some support that might not have been there so easily if they had not if they had been aware well, our plan this year is probably, hopefully will make people a little more aware because we definitely intend to be more, like I said, interactive with the state. Is there any talk about what that is? Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going into the full details just because I don't want those details uh -huh. for, let's say, for security purposes. Uh -huh. we don't okay. details mm -hmm. But I can talk to you privately after that. <laughs> okay. uh, Angela? I was just going to say I affirm um, the way in which um, that interruption happened in Pride Parade last year because what you just said, um, it's further evidence that the way in which the Pride Parade gets taken over to begin with, people receive, receive, receive what they're bombarded with all of the time. And so it really says something that um, this strong political message would come down the street and people be open to it and receiving of it because if we were um, penetrating the hearts and minds of people as far and wide as we could with the truth, people would also be open to it. Yeah. And so we're deeply appreciative of that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm thinking about the things that you were saying about the sponsors, because that seems to be a really strong point of focus as to what this separation that it's caused. And so, I'm, uh, you know, I would like to, I don't know, I want to uh, study more or something. <laughs> um, I want to know the right things to say on my signs about, uh, about attacking those Do you want things. more specific information about those particular entities? Or? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, and um, I mean, that seems like a real strong point of focus is to be saying, this is what we don't like right. <laughs> that um, we don't want. We, we can we can definitely share some of uh, some of the research we've done uh, into these. And uh, I mean, I have your contact information. I can definitely share it with you. If anyone else is interested, 